welcome back to AB Workshops. Um, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks very much for all those uh, guys that have liked and subscribed so far. If you uh, if you like what you see, let us know. Leave us a comment down below uh, and all that malarkey. There's a little button you can push. I believe it's a bell shape. Push that. That gives you a bit of a notification when we uh, when we're, we've put up a new video. We're going to keep on trying putting up videos at least every sort of two a week at least. So. The reason for this film today is to talk to you about these. These are Oberon Clutch Slave Cylinders. So Oberon Clutch Slave Cylinders, we've got people who've been calling us asking to give us some kind of information about what they do, what they are, how they work, and um, a little bit of sort of how do you fit them, that kind of thing. There seems to be a bit of a thing about um, bleeding clutches. Some people struggle, some people don't. So we've done a little video to show you how that works and um, how we do it because there's a couple of little tricks of the trade that you can use just to save yourself a whole world of pain uh, bleeding a clutch system. Like I said, some people are struggling with it a bit. So you can go onto the website www.apworkshops.co.uk over on clutch slave cylinders we do silver and black okay and um, they reduce the lever pressure okay thanks very much for joining us take care talk to you soon so welcome to the voiceover section of this this is all a bit new uh, so uh, bear with me on this one so fit a brake band so basically put a little bit of pressure on the clutch cylinder that brake band that we've got is a little bit of bicycle inner tube that we've cut up just to put a little bit of pressure on it uh, so this here is the slave cylinder the slaves this is the part that you're going to replace now because we've got the brake band on we have got a little bit of line pressure so it is going to make a little bit of mess when you open it up but we'll open up the bleed nipple just to let it uh, let off the pressure oh, you guys made me eat. <laughs> okay and then we're going to make a dog's dinner of oh, oh, oh dropping spanners Nothing to see here, please! Uh, moving swiftly on, so we are going to loosen off the banjo bolt. Now the banjo bolt is the part that actually connects the clutch line to the actual slave cylinder itself. So, now we've got everything loosened off at the top, we're just going to disconnect the actual slave cylinder from the engine itself. M6 by one bolts with an M5 Allen key, you should be able to just wind them out, no problems whatsoever. You just keep that, so if you wind them out sort of sequentially, then it all comes out straight and in one hit, no problems. It shouldn't be too difficult to get this little bit. So one, two, three, and remove the entire system. It might take a bit of a wiggle, but we can get it out, and there we go. This, it's, this section, you can actually see we've got two, two parts to the slave cylinder, the holder and the actual slave cylinder itself. So disconnect the banjo bolt. You might get a because of the clutch fluid floating about, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but, but just bear with it. it. It's a bit tricky and there is copper washers in there that may drop out. So just, just bear with it, sit tight and it'll go, take your time, you'll find it. Keep everything nice and clean and tidy as much as you can. And there you go, you can see we've got two quite distinct sections to the actual clutch slave cylinder. And we're only replacing the slave cylinder, so we need to remove that holder off the slave cylinder. So I use a flat blade screwdriver. There is a prying point, which you can see, and it comes off quite easily, no problems whatsoever. Open sesame! Okay, dead straightforward. So then take hold of your new piece, your new parts. This part then does actually come with new copper washers and new bolts. So uh, when you're reassembling it, you can assemble it all nice and uh, with all nice bolts. Take a little bit of time here to actually clean up the, you know, the, the, the holder if you want to, and, and you can sort of just lay everything out nicely. Just when you put it all back together again, it just goes back together that much cleaner if you can see exactly what's going on. The bolts are the same size, they're just nice and fresh and new, so when you're assembling it all up, it looks kind of uh, a, a lot better if you like, so when it's come. So, laying everything out then, we'll put everything back together again. Just make sure, let's put a fresh copper washer on because you're changing a hydraulic system, so we'll put the banjo bolt, back into the clutch line, fresh copper washers. Then we're going to assemble the slave cylinder, the new slave cylinder onto the line. We'll just keep everything sort of uh, hand tight at the moment, just so we know exactly what's going on, just so we can assemble it and get the alignment correct so it looks good. So pop your new banjo button on hand tight, reassemble your, uh, your, your, your holder back onto the clutch slave as well and reassemble back on. Now you may feel a little bit of tension putting this back on, that's because there's a spring behind it. One thing you've got to watch for when you're assembling this is that you're not gonna trap any wires. Exactly, just like that. So pop your new bolts in, 
pop them in, line them up, and when you're building it back up, if you just wind those back in, in order, sort of don't over tighten one of them, pull it all back in straight, it all goes back in straight, the actual holder, there you go, just checking for wires again. Just keep checking as you're going along. Pull them in sequentially, if you can do that, then basically the whole clutch slave cylinder goes back in nice and neat. The holder is an interference fit into the engine case. So if you do it that way, it just makes life a lot easier for you rather than sort of pulling it on awkwardly. Tighten up your banjo bolt because that's still hand tight, but now you've got it held down so you know exactly what's going on. Tighten up your banjo bolt because that's obviously got to be a hydraulic seal on that one. You have got your new copper washers on, so no problems there. And then we're going into the bleeding section. This can be the little bit, this is the section where some people get a little bit kind of confused about how it takes um, and how it gets done. There's a lot of people talking about reverse bleeding, but we've never really needed to do anything like that over here as it goes. So we're, we've been quite lucky. Um, we, we're using a plastic bottle there, but we've used milk bottles in the past. It's kind of an old school method, but, uh, but it is what it is. So as you can see, you've still got uh, clutch fluid in the reservoir. So you've not bled the system dry completely. You've locked off the master cylinder because you've got your brake band on. Put a little bit of cloth around just to protect, just in case you've got any spillage, just so you can protect paintwork, any anodizing that's underneath it. It's just in case. Take the brake band off. That's it. Open up um, basically then. If you make sure that the line is submerged, you can then hold it hold the lever shut open up the bolt hold the lever shut open up the bolt okay so what we've got a method here is sounds really weird and i'm going to say it but i don't care i'm going there so on your lever it's pump pump open up the bolt pump the lever twice open up the bolt pump the lever twice open up the bolt pump the lever twice open up the bolt as long as that hose that you've got into your bottle is submerged you will not have a problem so we'll just keep going, making sure that we're not going to let the reservoir run dry. While you're there, you might as well give it a clean as well, just to make sure that everything's, if you have a look, you can see a tiny bit of muck in there. We'll give that a clean out in a little bit, but you can see kind of it, when we step back with the camera a little bit, you can see exactly what's going on. So pump, pump, open up the pump, pump, open up the lever. That's it. If as you can see, we're starting to get a pressure now already. If you do it that way, it can save you a whole heap of time. Just Rather than having to reverse bleed, it just takes a lot less time to do the job. And there we go. Job's a good one. I think by the looks of things, just another little top up and that should be completely done. We'll just give the lever a test. Once we've topped up, get a squeeze one more time, maybe. Yeah, there we go. You can see the effort it's taking to actually pull the clutch in. So we know we've got that there, but we're just kind of making sure, just making sure Obviously keep checking to make sure the reservoir doesn't run dry. Okay, a couple more times just to make sure. Clearly I'm overdoing it here, but you know what? I don't mind. I'd rather just, uh, there you go, one little test. There you go. Job's a good one. Job done. Just make sure that there's uh, it isn't over full. There is a level on the actual reservoir itself, a maximum level. As long as you make sure that it isn't actually above that, it should be absolutely fine. Remember to fit your cap, give yourself a, a wipe down and just make sure everything's clear and clean on that side of things. <sighs> Job's a good one. There you go. A bit of a tidy up, make sure everything's okay. Don't forget to fit the dust cap over the actual bleed nipple once you've got that done. And um, that is it. So effectively, a bit of a wipe down. Job done. That is probably less than five minutes um, for, to bleed a clutch system.